Hello everyone, my name is Gina and I work with the Mount St. Helens Institute. We are a nonprofit that teaches about the science and stories of Mount St. Helens and we hope to inspire the questions and curiosities that you have about volcanoes. This morning I'm going to lead a demonstration called Volcano Self Portrait. To participate, you only need a couple of things. You're going to need yourself, you're going to need some art supplies, a blank piece of paper, I have with me here a notebook paper, nice and large and blank, and then I have a set of markers, all different colors, so that I can color in my drawing as I go. Today, we are going to learn about volcanoes, specifically what makes up volcanoes. There are many different types of volcanoes around the world, and what do they all have in common? So to start today, I am going to flip over to this web screen view and we'll begin by drawing the structure of volcanoes. So here on my piece of paper, I'm going to start by drawing the ground through which the volcano is going to intrude. So I'm going to start with two horizontal lines across my paper. And all volcanoes work as a conduit or a means for liquid molten, semi-molten material that we call magma underground to reach the surface. So I'm going to begin by drawing the magma chamber. This magma chamber might look a little bit blobby. Maybe it has some fingers and tendrils. And I'm going to draw a large magma chamber because these can be very, very, very large underground. Then, when I've finished my magma underground, I'm going to draw the neck of the volcano, the place where the magma extrudes up into the surface. So I'll take these lines and push them up. And when the magma comes up to the surface, it erupts on the surface. And it turns into what we call lava. So I'm going to build out some lava flows. And sometimes these flows will be thin. And sometimes these flows will be thicker, like so. But over time, our volcano builds by successive layers. And so I'm going to fill in the structure of the volcano here with layers of erupted material. Some of these layers might be straight. Some of these layers might be like blobs. Some of the layers might be continuous from one side to the other. And some of these layers might be darker than others if they're made out of different types of material. So I'm going to shade all of this material and then sometimes the volcano will not only erupt flows that flow down the surface, but it will also erupt ash. So I'm going to draw a big ash column. to the side. Now, two more elements I would like to add to my drawing. First, inside the magma chamber, I'm going to draw bubbles, signifying the gases that are trapped within the magma. And these bubbles exist well within the entire magma body. Sometimes there are areas where the bubbles are more concentrated. Then I'm going to also add into my magma chamber crystals because within the semi and molten material underground, that material is starting to cool down and as it cools, it grows minerals or crystals. These minerals I'm going to draw as very small little rectangles and I'm going to fill them in so that they are black. 
And these crystals grow very, very slowly. They grow by layer upon layer upon layer of atoms arranging themselves. Think about maybe the structure of a snowflake, very delicate structure. And over time, they can grow to be large, but it takes them a very long time to grow large. So I might add a couple of very large crystals into my magma chamber. But it can take these millions of years, if not tens and hundreds of millions of years to grow very large. And so most of the crystals that I'm going to draw in my magma chamber are going to be smaller. is my proto-volcano. All volcanoes around the world have the same structure. I'm going to highlight certain elements of this volcano using a different color. I will use the color orange. So the first component of the structure is over here. We're going to label this number one. Number one represents the layers of erupted material that build up our volcano. Over here, I'm going to put a number two. Number two represents the rock upon which our volcano is building, so the foundational bedrock. This is the rock through which the magma chamber is uh, flowing and also the rock atop which all of the material is erupting. Number three, I'm going to label the gas bubbles inside my magma chamber. And then for number four, I'm going to label the crystals themselves. For number five, I'm going to say that the entire magma within the magma chamber is number five. And number six, finally, is going to be the material that erupts. And I'm going to place my number six into the ash cloud. So again, these are the six elements of our volcano. I'll label them one more time. So number one is going to be the layers of erupted material that make up the volcano. Number two is going to be the rock upon which the volcano builds itself and through which the magma chamber is intruding. Number three is going to be the gas bubbles that form a component of the magma. They are dissolved within the magma. Number four are the crystals that are growing slowly, slowly, slowly within the magma. And sometimes these crystals get erupted out. So maybe I'll draw a little crystal up here, a little crystal up here. Number five is going to be the entire magma body underground. And number six is going to be the material that erupts the ash. Well done. All volcanoes around the world are made out of these basic components, yet they are expressed in different ways. Some have different types of magma than others. Some have more gases dissolved within the magma, and some have more or less crystals within the magma. These differences result in different types of eruptions. Some eruptions, like the eruption of Mount St. Helens, are explosive, and some eruptions, like the volcanoes that erupt in Hawaii, flow more easily. The, the material coming out flows more easily. Similarly, as people, we all share things in common, yet we all have unique differences, and there are aspects about ourselves that are unique between individuals. We're going to take a look at how these differences express themselves in volcanoes and also how these differences express themselves in us. I'm going to take a moment to show you two videos of volcanoes erupting. We're going to start with a video of Mount St. Helens in 1980. And I want us to notice as this video is going, this video is made from a series of photographs that were put together by one person named Gary Rosenquist who happened to be taking pictures of the mountain the morning that it erupted. He captured this very famous series that helps us learn about how volcanoes erupt because this series of photographs was taken within the thir first 30 seconds of the eruption. 
we're going to begin by looking at, at Mount St. Helens. What type of material does it look like the volcano is erupting? What color is the material? What style is the eruption? So let's take a look at this. And this is a video of the ash coming out of the volcano that was taken by a helicopter after the eruption. We like to say that Mount St. Helens went kaboom. But notice the color and the type of material that's coming out of this volcano. Now I want to show you another video of volcanoes around the world. And this one is created by a group of scientists who study volcanoes who want to teach people about the hazards of volcanoes. This is part of a series called Vol Film, Volcano Film, and all of these films are free and on the internet. So if you search Vol Film, there's a whole series that will teach you about different types of eruptive behaviors of volcanoes and also what types of hazards are possible. So here's a video showing volcanoes erupting around the world. Some of these images are from Hawaii, and it shows how Sometimes the material coming out of volcanoes can flow and be much more runny. I like to say runny like honey versus the sticky material that had come out of Mount St. Helens. And the differences in what we see erupting on the surface have to do with what's happening underground. Again, the composition of our magma chamber. Do we have a lot of gas? Do we have a lot of crystals? Notice how this magma behind me is flowing pretty incredible. Now I want you to compare this liquid flow kind of ooey gooey oozing magma to the video that will come up in just a moment showing magma from Mount St. Helens. So here behind me is showing this is the same type of stuff but look at how it's not flowing. It's sticky. I like to describe it more like toothpaste. It has a very, very different flavor than what has come out of Hawaii. That's another image of the lava that has been extruding from Mount St. Helens in 2004. Volcanoes all start out with magma that is the same type of mixture, but again, depending on the amount of gas or crystals within the volcano, it can make a difference in what the material erupts. Different things also happen to the magma on its journey to the surface. Sometimes it encounters really hard rock that it's pushing through. Sometimes it melts some of that rock and some of that melt mixes in with the magma material. But all of these make volcanoes that are unique and express themselves uniquely on the surface. What we are going to do is we are going to go back to our drawing and we are going to consider how we might relate to the parts of a volcano. And so, I want to quickly first show you some images that give some context to the parts of the volcano that we talked about. So again, we'll come over here to the small screen, and I'm going to show a couple of images. This first image shows what a volcano looks like in what we call cross-section. Now, if you remember when we were drawing our volcano, we drew an image with many, many layers. This is an image made by folks at a university that's trying to model or demonstrate what the interior of a volcano, a certain type of volcano, might look like. And you can see that it's built from successive layers, each of these layers of representing a different eruption, each layer a different color. And notice how some of them are blobs and some of them are thin layers. I really like this illustration. If we look at a photograph of Mount St. Helens itself, you will see that the volcano is similarly built up of different layers. In this picture here, the different layers are labeled, and it might be hard to read, but what I want you to notice are the different colors. So first along the top, we have that dark color. That was a, a rock called basalt that was erupted from Mount St. Helens over a thousand years ago. But notice how much darker, it's almost black colored compared to the lighter material below it. That forms one layer. We have another layer, the whitish layer in the middle of the photograph called the Pine Creek Lava Dome. And that's different color than the reddish material underneath it and the darker gray material above it. So just like that simplified drawing of what the interior of a volcano looks like with many different colored layers, 
this photograph shows in real life that volcanoes are made out of different layers. Now, I'm going to take this moment on my drawing and maybe I'm going to color in my different layers with some different colors to give it a little bit of flavor. So maybe this spot is green. So take time to make your drawing as beautiful as you want to. Another image that I want to show you is an image of someone collecting gas that comes out of volcanoes. The gas is within the magma and sometimes it will just loosely come out of the volcano in what we call venting. Anyways, this is a person collecting real gas sample from an active volcano. And notice the yellow color by his knee. Sometimes the gases contain an element called sulfur. And the sulfur, when it mixes with oxygen, will create a compound that is yellow, bright yellow colored. So if you look closely at photographs of real volcanoes, in the volcanoes that have active places um, like an eruptive vent, then there oftentimes could be yellow coloring on the rocks. Now the gas also, when it's trapped inside, I like to think about that affecting the style of the eruption like a soda. So if I was to shake a Coke bottle and get all those gases trapped up and then I keep the lid on, all the pressure has built up underground. And similar thing happens with volcanoes. When that pressure builds up, it will build and build and build until when there is a moment of release, like taking the cap off, it will explode out. So I like to think about this image as how the gases serve as the motivation of the eruption. Will the eruption be explosive or not? Whether the gases are trapped inside or allowed to bubble up gently. Here is a photograph of a rock that is a very common rock that comes from volcanoes called basalt. And notice how it is full of holes. All of the holes in its structure formerly held gas. So sometimes the, the material, the magma coming out of the tube of the volcano, the conduit, up here does contain a lot of gas. So I'm going to draw a couple of more gas bubbles in my conduit because this rock would come right up the vent. And one more thing that I want to share is this image showing this is a picture of volcanic ash from Mount St. Helens under a microscope where it is magnified over two million times under an electron microscope. And notice all of the holes in the structure as well. This all is created from gas and that's within the material. So I'm going to take my volcano drawing here and I'm going to add a couple of more gas bubbles up into the material that's erupting to represent gas that often is contained inside the eruptive material and reflects itself in the structure even when that material turns into hard rock or hard rock. The last image that I want to share is one of my favorite images. This is a picture of some lava that was extruded from Mount St. Helens in 2004. Brand new lava on the surface. You might even be older than this lava if you were born before 2004. This lava contained small, small crystals in it. And if I had a piece of this rock today, we would not be able to see the crystals in the rock. But this is an image of that, a slice of that rock that's taken and put under the microscope. And when we put things under the microscope, often we can see things that we cannot see with our naked eye. So inside this one lava, there were already growing so many beautiful little crystals. And so that's why some of the crystals in my drawing might be really small. And maybe I'll add some small little drawings to my crystals. Maybe these are so teeny tiny that only I know that they're there. So what we are going to do now is we are going to think about how we relate to the structure of volcanoes. So I'm going to pull up here a simplified version of the drawing. And we are going to map our own selves onto this volcano. So we're going to start with the part that we labeled as number one in our drawing, which is where the layers of the volcano were built. And for this part, 
the question asks, what are my strengths? So I'm going to go over to my drawing here. And where it says number one, I am going to write down strengths. And I'm going to think about things that I am strong, things that I am proud of of myself, things that maybe I've worked hard. Maybe I play an instrument. Maybe I love volcanoes. I love being outside. I am a happy and positive person. And I'm going to write all of those down inside the layers of my volcano as well as around my volcano and I can write them down on both sides. So maybe I love my dog. Maybe I'm a loving person. Maybe I'm proud that I can yo-yo and I'm a yo-yo champion. So that's what I'm going to write for number one, strengths. The next element that we are going to reflect on is going to be the rock that supports our volcano. We call this supporting rock the bedrock. And for this, I'm going to reflect on the question, who supports me? So thinking about myself and my life, what types of people or communities, teachers, parents have supported me in my growth and my journey? So I'm going to flip over to my drawing here. And for number two, under the ground, I'm going to write down people that have been important in supporting me. So my mom, my dad, my family, maybe my teachers, maybe my classmates, maybe a certain friend. And I'm going to write all of this down for number two. The next element that we are going to discuss is number three, the gas bubbles. And if you remember when we had, had that photograph of the Coke bottle, the gas can really motivate an explosive eruption by building pressure and holding that pressure underground. So I'm going to think about the answer to the question, what motivates me? And I'm going to think about, you know, what drives me in my life? Do I want to make a difference in the world? Maybe I just want more people to know about volcanoes. And I'm going to write that down in section three of my drawing. So my motivations are to teach people about volcanoes and get myself and other people excited about the world. So I'll take a moment and write down things that motivate me in number three. The next element that we are going to discuss are the crystals. And these crystals are going to represent challenges for us because they take a long time to grow and oftentimes challenges take a long time for us to learn about and overcome. And so for the, where there are crystals in my drawing, for element number four, I'm going to think about what are challenges in my life. So maybe some of my challenges are communicating with other people. I want to improve how I like teach my teaching style. Maybe I want to uh, talk more to my family about my love of volcanoes and what I want to do. And maybe I just don't know how to use um, the internet to get my love for volcanoes out there. So there are things that I want to work on would be my challenges. The next element is our magma chamber itself. And for this, we are going to answer the question, what do I want to be better at? So flipping over to my drawing in number five, the area of number five, I'm going to think about things that I want to be better at. So maybe this includes some of my challenges, but maybe these are totally separate. I want to be better at understanding how volcanoes work. And I also want to be better at understanding what's happening underground inside magma chambers. And I want to be a stronger communicator of all of this information. So I'm going to write all of that down in number five, representing my magma chamber. Finally, the final question is for the material that erupts out of my volcano. This is going to represent the impact that I have on my community. And sometimes volcanoes make an impact in the short term. For example, if ash erupts 
and covers a city that could shut down the city in the short term like it did in eastern Washington in places like Spokane after the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. But sometimes the impacts or results of a volcanic eruption can be seen in the long term. So many of the places around the world that grow excellent coffee grow this coffee because they grow coffee in soils that are enriched by volcanic ash. So for this section, I'm going to think about what kind of impacts do I want to have in my community? And I'm going to write this down in the ash and erupted material. I would like to have an impact in the short term of affecting strong knowledge about volcanoes. And in the long term, I'd like to build a community of people around me who love volcanoes. Now I have successfully mapped myself onto my volcano, completing the volcano self-portrait. I want to thank you all for participating in this activity with me. If you would like to continue the activity at home, we ask that you work to complete two challenges. The first challenge is to complete your own volcano self-portrait. So we went through this activity relatively quickly. So take some time, maybe redraw the elements and think about those questions of things that you want to improve, things that you want to, ways that you want to grow and the impact that you want to have on your world. There is complimentary to this video, a worksheet of the drawing with the questions on it. So you can download and print that and fill it out on your own. The second challenge that we're asking you to do is to learn about volcanoes around the world. And in particular, pick one volcano that you've never heard of around the world and do a self portrait or profile of it. So maybe look at some photographs, read a little bit about it and draw it in a way that highlights one element that you learn. So maybe you choose a volcano that is on an island that you've never heard of and you learn that the entire island, the structure of the island is the volcano. Or maybe you pick a volcano that has a unique style of erupting and you draw a little bit of that style. Include a couple of sentences with something that you've learned about the volcano and please include the name of that volcano if you submit to us. Finally, I want to thank you all so much for participating in this activity with us. Here at the Mount St. Helens Institute, we work to inspire curiosity and questions about volcanoes. And we know that you are curious about volcanoes. We are curious about volcanoes too. Support us in our work, spread these videos, and consider sharing this material, participate in our activities. All of this makes the work that we do worth it. A thank you also to the folks who contributed material for this video. So the images of Mount St. Helens erupting were captured by Gary Rosenquist and they were put together by folks at the U.S. Geological Survey. The U.S. Geological Survey also provided some of the images of volcanoes and then that beautiful video of volcanoes erupting around the world but the lava was created by the project called Vol Film. Tune into our programming at mshinstitute.org.